Hello and welcome to the show. Now there is all sorts of different things you can do to the cars in Forza 6 when it comes to tuning and you can make some incredibly bizarrely handling vehicles. However, today's challenge is all about the brakes, or to be more precise, the lack of them. As I took this Toyota MR2, put the brake pressure to zero. So when you press the brake trigger, absolutely nothing happens. And we would proceed to go racing with a full lobby of these cars. Now the only way to get these stopped is to use the handbrake. Not exactly the best way of getting a car slowed down, but it sounded like an interesting challenge for us to, uh, to go and try. So yeah, we would see how they would fare. First of all, at the Catalonia School Circuit. This is not too bad of a circuit to try and, try and get started. The braking zones aren't massive and these cars aren't hugely fast, so I thought we might stand a little bit of a chance. As you can imagine, the first time we came to a corner that required some serious braking, many cars managed to uh, escape the track down there. Uh, Trying to learn the braking zones for these vehicles was very interesting because, you know, as soon as you press the handbrake, you're going to lock the rear wheels, which is not particularly good for getting a car stopped. The back end will wiggle around, it'll throw itself sideways, so you've got to fight for control with that. Now, you can tap the handbrake, which is the best thing to do to try and get these things slowed down, but where you start trying to get them slowed down from was sort of guesswork on this uh, these opening few laps as the blue MR2 goes exploring into the gravel trap. But uh, you know, a lot of cars were kind of getting the hang of it pretty quickly. The real difficulty and the bigger problem, I didn't quite foresee this one uh, as much, but it's trying to avoid an accident up ahead. If things have gone wrong up ahead, as we see here, the blue car just can't get stopped and tang tangled with the purple vehicle. The rest of us, it is so hard, so hard to try and get out of the way. You can see the crash up ahead, but you, have, you don't have enough control of the vehicle to do anything about it because you're already just about on the braking limits trying to slow the car down. And then if you're asking to try and steer it, it's not, it's not going to work. So yeah, that was a, a big problem. Trying to do kind of little little adjustments to speed. Of course, you could let off the throttle and so on, but uh, trying to do these little adjustments were really, really tough with the car. That was by far the biggest problem. Not so much actually getting them slowed down for the corners. As I said, you know, people are starting to get the hang of it. Still, of course, there were the odd mistakes as the black car pushes his luck a little too much trying to get up the inside, just the tiniest of nudges. And, of course, we're using the handbrake to slow it down, so the tiniest of nudges is going to upset the car. Again, another prime example, there's suddenly a car ahead of you, you can't do anything about it. The, the 73 car just spins in sympathy, trying to avoid all of the chaos uh, going on back there. Towards the front, and uh, as I said, you know, people were starting to get the hang of these cars very, very quickly. Uh, mistakes, though, were incredibly easy to make just to ask that a little bit too much I love how you will see often the brake lights just coming on it's just an instinct the brake lights coming on it doesn't matter if people are pressing the brake trigger it's not going to do anything so yeah just the, the instinct of the uh, the brake lights coming on here this was the, the fight now for second place between the black and white MR2s this final corner here was a little bit of an arsy corner actually you couldn't quite take it flat out car on the inside I think he ran the curb may have got a little assistance as well from the vehicle behind it's very very sideways around there the white MR2 is uh, is going to the outside yeah that, that that corner there was a bit of an arsy one. Very easy to get too much understeer and uh, take these cars out wide. If you did get the braking right into these corners, of course, you could make up a huge amount of time through here. If you if you could get, you know, drive that very, very fine line between getting it stopped and braking as late as possible, uh, you could as a black car moves up a bit position. Unfortunately, uh, you would just overcook it and sadly disconnect uh, around the uh, next corner. Further back, there was more racing going on, and you know, there were quite a few bumps throughout the uh, throughout the field, but um, often vehicles remained in close proximity, often cars had uh, had someone to go racing with. We were running damage on simulation because didn't want people just sort of banging the car down into really low gears to engine brake. I uh, thought that was a little bit cheaty, so if you did that, you'd blow your engine to bits, and uh, yeah, you, you weren't able to do that. But uh, these cars were pretty resilient, ignore the lagged out ghost replay car uh, around there. These cars were pretty resilient, uh, despite, you know, a few knocks here and there with walls and other cars, and most part people were doing pretty well at uh, keeping them going. Uh, these guys, uh, <laughs> I like the synchronized, they both went on the brakes to get stopped, both of the cars tipped sideways and fired them off on the gravel in exactly the same way. I had quite a lonely race in this one. I got myself up to a fourth, was trying to close on third. I had been pretty damn good at getting it stopped into this first corner, being late on the brakes. This was coming towards the final laps. I just pushed my luck a little bit too much, tipped the MR2 in very, very sideways into that first corner. 
as I said, you could make up a huge amount of time. If if you got the braking spot on into these corners, you could make up massive, massive ground. But if the car ahead was perhaps being a little bit slow, being a bit cautious, uh, trying to make sure they didn't make a mistake, yeah, you could make up a huge amount of time. But of course, you always ran the risk of getting it too sideways, of spinning the car, or just simply not stopping it. And I was uh, throwing caution to the wind on the, in these closing stages, trying to get a podium. I couldn't quite do it though, pushed my luck again a little too hard through the, through the next corner, was going to have to settle for fourth place. At the front it had been an equally lonely race for the uh, the leader, it started on pole, not made any mistakes through the opening couple of laps, avoided all of the chaos and drove away from the uh, from the rest of the field. If, if you drove just that little bit cautiously, you perhaps might not be setting the ultimate lap time, but by not making mistakes, you could build a decent gap, and, you know, just being out in clean air is, uh, is really rather useful in these kind of races, especially when there is so much chaos going on further back. Uh, the driver tars also, when the AI take control of the vehicles after you've crossed the line, yeah, they don't really know what to do with the cars, they just kind of stop them. Uh, further back, these guys, despite getting into all sorts of trouble, again we see another prime example between the two blue MR2s and black car there, uh, there was just too many vehicles trying to fit into the same piece of road and nobody had the control or the stopping power to kind of avoid it all. Uh, you, despite the odd bumps and shunts, these guys were all still finishing really very close to one another. The purple MR2 here manages to make the move stick around the outside. I mean that's a that's a not an ideal maneuver to do in normal cars, let alone in vehicles with uh, with no brakes. So yeah, that was uh, well done to make that manoeuvre stick around there. The black car is throwing caution to the wind across the kerbs again with a big slide in his vehicle as we round this uh, long, seemingly never-ending corner. It was, uh, as I said, it was a little bit of a faff getting that right with the MR2. We saw many cars understeering out wide if you uh, got the line slightly wrong through there. Either way, the purple car was to uh, take this particular position and then the driver tires throw the cars off the road. The group behind, you may have seen the background of that shot, the <laughs> these guys had been through the wars had been in all sorts of trouble, most of them were pointed backwards a number of times during the race, and still, after all of these laps, they were going to be finishing nose to tail as they try and fight for positions up towards this uh, final corner. I chose this particular circuit as kind of a... Uh was an introduction to racing these cars because a lot of the time you don't have to worry too much about the brakes. We see here this final corner uh, catching someone out. That was something that we saw an awful, awful lot. Was going to get passed by two cars in that uh, in that particular manoeuvre. Yeah, th there were a couple of big braking zones, but on the most part, you know, it's, a lot of the track was just sort of little lifts off the uh, the throttle. And uh, sure enough, the driver tars um, immediately roll the MR2s, and then we've got a, a pretty big graveyard of well the. <laughs> Cars that, have, uh, cars that have finished the races and driver tires having all manner of issues and some more cars are ploughing in to uh, join in the chaos. Our second race we would go to the Lime Rock circuit. So a little bit more heavy braking zones to be dealing with uh, around here as we run down towards the uh, the first corner. Uh, now everybody just about sort of got the hang of these vehicles and amazingly Almost all of the cars made it through the, or got it stopped into this first corner on the opening lap. It got a little bit crowded uh, further back. We were all bumping one another. Then a few of us started falling off the track, simply trying to fit too many vaguely controllable MR2s into the same space. I was one of the cars that had to do a little bit of a rally cross to avoid it. But uh, considering that, you know, these cars do not drive like a normal vehicle. They have absolutely nothing in the way of braking. You've got a very, very weird way of trying to stop them. And now we've got someone going around the outside on the way up the hill. That's Yeah, I was amazed at some of the overtakes that people were trying and pulling off successfully with these vehicles that are so weird to drive, so barely, barely controllable. Uh, around the outside of that corner there is, is a tough thing to do in a normal car let alone in a car that doesn't get stopped at all. But the first real, real big test was going to be on the second lap as we, you know, we're starting a flying lap now with these cars. We're going to be going to get some decent speeds down this uh, Lime Rock straight, and you've got a pretty decent braking zone here. Of course, uh, not everybody quite got these the uh, the stopping down here, right, the first time around. Uh, so <laughs> quite a few cars were sliding off the track. One guy had a wheel on the grass. That is definitely not what you want to be doing. You do not want to be having a wheel on the grass uh, trying to get the vehicles slowed down. This was, I think, the fight for uh, for second place. With a little bit of a nudge, the yellow car would, uh, would lose out of all of that. Again, it's, it's this very, very easy thing to... Um to do when you've got cars so close around you, trying to, you know, kind of anticipate what they're going to do, because you've got to have enough time to try and get slowed down when you're using the handbrake. It's little bumps that are very, very likely to happen. 
through uh, throughout the course of this race when you're when you're racing closely uh, when the car ahead does something a little bit unpredictable it's so hard to get out of the way uh, these guys the, the black M black mr2 would have find his way up the inside trying to get these trying to kind of almost balance the uh, the speed to take through these fast corners because again it's only a little you know if you're driving these normally it's a little down on the brakes for some of these corners with these kind of cars but uh, when you've got to be using the handbrake to slow it down trying to judge how much you need to be using it to get the car stopped and so on was uh, a very <laughs> a very bizarre experience and certainly a very very challenging one as uh, these lots would uh, would go through on this lap and again much like we saw at, um, at Catalonia if you could get the braking right you could make up a huge amount of time if you got the braking wrong things tended to get quite scary <laughs> to this first corner we've got a, a couple of tandem completely out of control MR2s uh, they all just about make it around there <laughs> side by side so yeah cars with with absolutely nothing in the way of brakes are going too wide through these first quarters and still <laughs> they're going too wide the rainbow card trying to make it stick around the outside couldn't quite make that maneuver hold gonna pretty much push the yellow mr2 all the way through the uh, next quarter again ignore the lagged out cars forza replays always being being funky with this one again we saw another car thinking about trying the brave around the outside thought better of it which is the wise thing to do is yellow car just takes a little too much speed gets it too sideways loses a load of time would lose the position to one car and another one would follow through but uh, it was you know you, you could often quite uh, quite easily fight back if the vehicles up ahead took a slightly compromised line to get past you they'd often find themselves in a little bit of trouble for the next quarter and certainly the yellow MR2 thought about getting up the inside was just a little bit too far back at the front and we were starting to have a little bit of a battle for the lead emerging as the lead just pushed his luck that a little too hard coming towards the final quarter there and again a little bit of rally cross from this particular MR2 uh, yeah it was it was a very very easy thing with such high speed corners here to just break a little bit too 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 little and not get stopped enough or break too much would be very very slow through the corner so yeah you got to try and try and find that uh, that balance There's a couple of cars are very sideways in the background still second place is looking trying to find a way past through these first corners if you're going to have a dive with these cars you've got to be really confident in knowing what you're doing trying to get like a big outbreaking maneuver with these was uh, yeah pretty pretty tough because you know you're struggling with uh, with very very bizarre stopping uh, stopping power essentially uh, with the yellow vehicle here just being a little bit too far back to try anything through this particular corner the other leader has got that uh, that nice little uh, safety margin third place wasn't that far behind these guys either and it would be the black mr2 that would go on to take a victory in this one as you can see the top three were all relatively close together Honestly, people by the end of this race people have already got pretty much the hang of these cars now and we're <laughs> we're setting you know relative again relatively similar lap times throughout quite a bit of the of the field and well the driver tires are well you know <laughs> don't really know what to do with uh, with these cars so decide that the tire bundles at the first quarter are probably the uh, the best place to fire them much like we saw at Catalonia the final lap here was to be the best of the action as well this black MR2 trying to uh, look for a way past a vehicle ahead that was a little bit slow coming up the hill uh, of course these vehicles are completely standard they're all you know standard mr2 is all exactly the same tune uh, so yeah again a good run up that hill gets the black car to the inside but it's not quite enough you can't quite get the maneuver done that is a, a well held around the outside there to have judged the braking correctly to have made the most of that around the final corner unfortunately <laughs> slightly duck out of the way of a spinning car and uh, that lets the black mr2 get past as the <laughs> yellow car would have to settle for the the other position behind i also had uh, again another relatively quiet race in this one i made a couple of mistakes into the first corner dropped myself through the order was trying to kind of do a little bit of a, a recovery drive around here i was coming under a bit of pressure from a black mr2 on this uh, final lap he goes to the inside again uh, i managed to hold it around the the outside that part I wasn't quite brave enough to have a big dive up the inside wasn't quite confident enough to get it stopped so I could hold my line out wide the car up ahead the green vehicle had braked a little too much coming for that a final corner which meant I carried a lot more speed down that part of the track I would get past him and uh, claim the position on the final run to the finish line and then we would add our cars to the graveyard of broken vehicles down here uh, to the first quarter and of course we have to have a mandatory fail race roll uh, in, a, in a video down there 
Yeah, these were an experience and a half to uh, to go racing with. I was, I was amazed. Come come that second race, you know, the amount of sort of proper sensible overtakes that were going on with cars that are not proper or sensible in any way, shape or form was, yeah, really, really quite incredible. Yeah, there were a fair few offs, a fair few cars exploring the uh, the grass areas of the track, but there was also, yeah, quite a lot of quite a lot of sensible racing and sensible overtaking, which for cars without any brakes is a bizarre thing to be saying. It was a lot of fun, though. So an interesting challenge in a very strange way we ended up having to drive the vehicles and so on. But, yeah, an interesting challenge, certainly, to try and drive a car using just the handbrake to uh, slow it down. I do very much recommend that uh, you give it a go. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>